Alright, hello YouTube. Uh, it's 178. It's been a long time since I've made a video. Um, but yes, this is going to be the beginning of a... Perhaps a rather unorthodox, you might say, Let's Play, uh, insofar as I'm not going to record myself playing the entirety of the game, or even perhaps most of the game. Uh, rather, this is more of a status update on a continuous uh, thing. Um, uh, particularly because just in the style of play I have, it probably wouldn't be very fun to watch directly. Um, but yes, my current project in CK2, through Crusader Kings 2, is to uh, is the zoom is you know a zoom built in SD playthrough, uh, and I have specific reasons for this. A number of, of particularly interesting reasons, I think. Um, and I've written them out here in a document, so I guess I'll read them. So the geographical center of Afro-Eurasia, this is the main continent of the world here, almost everyone on the planet lives there. Uh, the geographical center is right about here, where the cursor is. Uh, and the geographical center of Eurasia is about there, in Kazakhstan. The area between the two is right there. Anyways. It turns out the largest city in the world is right here, uh, Karachi, if it'll ever load, there it is, largest city in the world essentially, um, right there, just north of the geographical center of Afro-Eurasia, and uh, yeah, so one of humanity's first civilizations also was in the Indus uh, River Valley. The nice thing about this location here also uh, is that, you know, it's the um, delta is the exit of the Indus River, a very important river. It's uh, connect. It's protected by desert, river, and mountains on all sides, and it has sea access, of course. And sea access, by the way, to all this stuff here. And a quick, easy access to here, here. Great location, just in and of itself. Besides the fact that it's literally the scent, the, the heart of humanity main continent. The heart of the old world is right at Karachi. Um, secondly, the second reason, so uh, I haven't really connected that to the Zunbil, but I will. So the Zunbil are an Afghan uh, dynasty. Uh, they're one of the last uh, peoples to resist the Arab invasion, uh, you know, in this part of the world. Um, and they are uh, descendants of a larger sort of confederation of states that used to exist around here. Uh, and this confederation eventually turned into uh, the, Posh the Pashtun ethnic group, uh, which the Zunbil dynasty would have been a part of, I believe. Uh, at the very least, they would have been Dari speakers. Uh, but so we have, you know, Pashtuns hereabouts. Uh, and those are the Zunbil and everyone else, you know, has just recently converted to Islam. So the nice thing about the Pashtuns is that they're an Eastern Iranic language group, or Pashto is an Eastern Iranic language group, so it comes from the Ar Iranic family, which comes from um, Indo-Iranian, which comes from Indo-European. Indo-European is pretty much the language family of most of the world, so following the cursor outline, here and then anywhere the Europeans went. That's all Indo-European languages. It's pretty it's most of the world is Indo-European. And the center of in, uh, the center of Indo-European languages, uh, you know, if we go with the Kurgan hypothesis, you know, somewhere around here or so. Um, I'd say in terms of location, the um, Circassian, well not Circassian language, but the uh, Accession language is probably the most central of it all. But uh, the most central group of Indo-European languages was the uh, Indo-Persian language family, which at the time covered pretty much this whole area. So the area, the steppes area that is currently covered by Slavic languages was actually originally covered by Persian languages. We have this huge area here. The Scythians, for example, were Persian speakers. Well, not speakers of Persian, but, you know, speakers of Persian, Persian languages. And also we have Avestan, which is the holy language of uh, Zarathustrianism, or Zoroastrianism. Um, and it, it, it was possibly an Eastern Iranic language in particular. We know it was an Iranic language, but it could have been uh, an Eastern Iranic language as well. Which is cool, because Pashto is an Eastern Iranic language. And of the two, and of the many lang Iranic languages spoken today, the second most widely spoken and the most widely spoken Eastern Iranic language is Pashto. 
uh, and so that makes it, uh, you know, just pretty interesting there. And the culture of the Pashtuns in particular is something of a hybrid between what you have in India and what you have in Iran. Uh, and also, you know, some of what's going on here. They eventually were conquered by Turkic groups and such. Um, and so it's, it's really a nice cultural middle ground as well as a geographical middle ground. I mean, Afghanistan, uh, you know, with the Pashtun area in northern Afghanistan or so, is pretty much the center of the geographical centers, the geographical center of the geographical center of, of Eurasia and the geographical center of Afro-Eurasia. It's right between them, which is pretty cool. And so, you know, you have this one area that's resisted Islamic rule, uh, ruled by a dynasty with a pretty cool name and a cool coat of arms in the Crusader Kings 2 game, the Zunville dynasty. Um, they worship the sun, which is a pretty reasonable thing to worship, I like, I, I think, anyway. Um, you know, protected by the Hindu Kush mountains, um, just slightly into the Indo the Indus River Valley, especially in my save game where I'm at right now. Um, so the goal is that I'm going to have the Pashto speaking Zunbil dynasty conquer the Indus River Valley and establish its capital at Debal, uh, Debul in Crusader Kings 2, which is just another word for Karachi. That's the Muslim name. Um, and probably, depending on how ridiculous I want to get into the save game, I'm probably actually going to manually rename every single province to the Pashto name of it. Uh, I'm going to Romanize it, of course, because I only have a Latin keyboard and I don't really want to mess with input input methods. Once I actually did that with the Byzantine Empire, and every time I conquered something and converted it to Greek culture, I would rename it to a uh, Latinized modern Greek form. <laughs> uh, anyways, so yes, that is the plan. Uh, and once we've, you know, consolidated this area here, uh, I'm going to attempt to conquer all of India and the rest of the world at some point. Um, but particularly India, and this is why I'm leaving the cheat console off, because I plan to remain Zunist the whole time, or as long as possible, in Crusader Kings 2. Um, but I also want to delay the reformation of the faith, because I want Islam and Hinduism to stick around, because I want to become Sikh in the next game. But the nice thing about Hinduism and focus, or sorry, um, Zunism and focusing on the Indus River Valley is that the holy sites in the game are about here, here, and here, and Multan over here, um, Kabul up here, and Bost or whatever over here. And so the holy sites for the religion are pretty uh, centrally set on the Indus River Valley, apart from the annoying Baghdad and Heliopolis all the way over there. So fuck those, but yes, so, you know, put our administrative capital here, we end up with all the holy sites relatively conveniently located. Um, and once we become Sikh in Europe and Europe Universalis 4, uh, well, you know, that's a religion originally by the Punjab, but uh, in this in this hypothetical scenario where the where the Pashtuns have taken over this area and everyone's begun to speak Pashto and such, uh, Sikhism would actually end up being founded by the Pashto, especially if Hinduism and Islam still stick around, which is why I'm planning on reforming the Zunist religion late so that those religions do stick around, so that I have, you know, some sort of a historical reason for Sikhism to come about. Um, and I'm leaving the console enabled, so I'm not playing Iron Man. One, because I'm using mods, I'm using CK2 Plus for this. Uh, and two, um, because I want, when I've conquered all of India, I want to use the, use the Chi console to, to temporarily convert me to a Dharmic religion so that, and Dharmic culture, or Indian culture, so that I can found India. And then I'll convert back to um, Zunism and Afghan. And the cool thing about that is, because of my culture and religion, it'll say Zunbil on the map. But because it's India, the map, the um, coat of arms will be the sun. And I think it's a really great match for Zunbil. So I'm leaving uh, the console enabled so I can do stuff like that at some point. Um, let's see, what else have I left out? So we've got Sikhism, Zunism. Yeah, uh, and then throughout your your Europa Universalis Four and Vicky Two, I'm planning on keeping it a monarchy, just so that the Zoom Bill Dynasty will always be in charge. But it's going to be like NHM's government in Vicky Two's terms. So like it's going to be pretty democratic. It's just going to have a figurehead monarch who is a Zoom Bill because that'd be pretty cool. So we're going to have the Zoom Bill Sikhs and Pashto speakers uh, eventually ruling the whole world from the center of Afro Eurasia. So that's the goal. Um, so, of course, this requires a start date at the very beginning of Crusader Kings 2. Let's go ahead and get that started. By the way, this is elementary uh, OS. It's a 
Ubuntu based Linux distribution. I use it on my laptop because I use Arch on my desktop, but I don't have the time to fuck around with Arch on my laptop, so I use something nice and simple on here. Alright, so Crusader Kings 2. And yes, Crusader Kings 2 and many other Paradox games run quite natively on Linux. But uh, I have Vicky 2 uh, set up on my desktop where uh, it's running in Wine. So I do, you know, I do have access to these things. Alright, so you no know, mod list. Let's see, get two plus, and I think there's one more. Yeah, quiet main theme, velvet dual tip, which is a aesthetic thing, and your path personal castle, which is just my my favorite mod. It's another less little flavor mod. All right, let's get the game started. Fortunately, volume is disabled right now because out of habit, I usually listen to Pandora while I play this game. So I may or may not enable it, but then again, you know, if I enable it, you might be kind of hard to hear me talk. Not that you probably care too much. Um, but yeah, all right. So let's wait for this to load. Oh yeah, and another cool thing about um, the capital that I'm planning to go with, I can't remember, I suddenly forgot the current name of it, but um, Karachi, that's right, the modern name is Karachi, but the CKD name is Debul, and cool thing about it is that even though it's located in Sindh, in an Aryan region, uh, it was founded by Persian uh, peoples, uh, uh, the Balochi, uh, so that's pretty cool, you know, yes, yet again, you know, it's uh, another sort of cultural intermediate, you know between Persians and, and, and Aryans, and the Indo-Aryan group as a whole is essentially the, you know, the, the central group of the Indo-European language, which is essentially the language family of the world, more or less, apart from China and a couple other areas. Alright, so, load game. Uh, it's on my laptop again, so it's a bit slow compared to my desktop, but Soon build. Ah, that went too far. Jesus, it's a lot slower when I'm recording. Hope it don't crash. That would that would really suck. There we go. All right, and load. So so far, um, about fifty years or so have passed, I believe. Um, some relatively interesting things have, pa have happened so far. Uh, thankfully, the Caliphate is on its knees, but at the same time, so is Byzantium, as it says you can see here. Bulgaria has actually conquered Constantinople somehow. Um, the, there we go, the Abbasid dynasty is not doing too well. It, lots of internal unrest. Uh, it still borders me, but it hasn't invaded me yet. These guys are actually, they were Zoroastrian liberate, there was a Zoroastrian liberation front that successfully liberated Persia. I've been taking lands from them. Uh, they went Muslim again, I believe. If it'll load, I shouldn't click on them. Yeah, they went Muslim again. Um, yeah, we're still Afghan and Zunist, uh, which, you know, kind of sucks because no one else is Zunist, so a lot of religious unrest thereabouts. But the Afghan culture has already begun to spread. As you can see here, it's in India uh, a little bit. Um, and we will gradually... Uh, one of the things I don't like about CK2 culture is look at all this Bedouin. Bedouin in the middle of the Indus River Valley. Like, really? Um, but we'll kick it out soon enough. And we'll take a look at the government. So this is a feudal campaign, of course. Um, it's not going to be a merchant republic campaign. Uh, largely because I want it to be remain something of a monarchy. There's Dibul, that's our ultimate short-term goal, apart from taking uh, the last of the three holy sites in, in, in India or so, which would be Multan. Currently we already have Kabul uh, right here, and the one we start with, Bost. I've moved the capital to Kabul temporarily until we can get it down to uh, Dibul. Alright, let's get it started. So as you can see, there's a lot of room for expansion in every direction, and there's no one really who threatens us apart from the Abbasids, but they're kind of falling apart, and there are a lot of easier targets for them, so they're not they're not going to focus on us. Especially since they're surrounded by a bunch of Muslims, and it's easier for them to conquer other Muslims in a lot of cases. Uh, even though they could just holy war us and no one would come to our aid, but they haven't done that yet. Alright, so we've actually had some weird stuff happen with the... Uh, dynasty and succession so far annoyingly. I did change it to Tanistry um, 
it's not available by default here, but it does have feudal elective, so I changed it to feudal elective um, with one ruler, and then I changed it to tanistry from that, because I love playing with tanistry, because, you know, I like seniority, but I like tanistry, because it gives my vassals the ability to vote for things, and at the same time, it elects older rulers, um, but it's also not quite as arbitrary as seniority, and, the, you know, the vassals, like, I think it's just a nice, a nice balance in a lot of ways. Sure, you don't really get to pick, you know, your exact successor once you have a big dynasty, but... You know, such such is the way of, of compromise. Also, it's just cool to have something called a tanist. Um, but honestly, there's not much of a difference between that and the other stuff. I did ultimate genitor for, for one of my guys, so... Alright. So, here we have history. Um, so, yeah. Two other times that I used cheats. Uh, so that wasn't my first character. My first character was... let's see... Where the hell was my first character? Gondar, Ballista, no. Where did I find my first character? Is that him? That's him. Okay, that's the first character. So he lived to be 59. Pretty decent, I think. No, that's not it. Where the fuck was my current character? Well, I can't remember my first character was, but it doesn't matter. Because the first character I played after Succession was this lad. Succession at the age of zero died at the age of 15. Yeah, so that was great. An entire lifetime under a regency. So that sucked. Um, got a lot of that got a lot of council laws pushed up, but such is the way. Um, when I realized he had died, I was when I, uh, well, when I realized he got pneumonia before he died, I was just like, you know, he's one year away from being able to enact Tanistry. None of my vassals hate me. He's going to die of pneumonia in a couple minutes anyway. So I went ahead and um, uh, went in the save file and disabled my current regent so that I could enable Tanistry. So I got all the opinion annoyances and everything uh, from, from doing it. Uh, and then, of course, it, you know, re it reinstated the, um, um, what's it called? Regent uh, after immediately after. So that the vassals elected him, that's not a bad ruler at all, um, especially, you know, given our current standing. Um, you know, so he's 30 right now, doing pretty well, Look, kind of like my friend Jason. Um, yeah, still agonatic, I'd like to get agonatic, cognatic, obviously, be nice to get some females elected. Um, since the council has powers, I'm going to have to get to max crown authority before I can get to imperial administration, but such is the way of things. Um, we've already got some nice things. Uh, we've already got revoked title anyway, but not much else beyond that. Obligations are pretty minimal, but at least burgers are maximally focused on tax, and fe uh, feudal focuses on levy. Um, that keeps feudal vassals as weak as possible relative to me, and it keeps burger vassals as weak as possible relative to me, which is important. Still not really sure where to put clergy for things. It makes, you know, like when you're a Christian, if you, ha if you own the Pope, you want to have free investiture and you want that on max. Otherwise, if you're a Christian who's a Catholic uh, and you don't have free investiture, you, sorry, and you do have free investiture, you want it on clergy because you're not going to get taxes anyway. But as a pagan, it's, I'm not really sure where I want this slider. I might put it on tax, since the clergy is always going to be like a minor holding, a barony holding, pretty much. Not sure. Yeah, you know, especially since we're going to get most of the others in feudal, that might be a good way to balance it. Hmm. But it would also weaken me a bit relative to my ass. Ah, what's, whatever. Let's get them voting on that. Alright. Uh, so yeah, tech not too great right now. I'm not going to spend on construction because I want to get improved keeps. Um, no retinue yet, yet, working on it, and we do, actually I can get my own revenue from retinue, shit, when that happen? Alright, well I will do that in a sec, yeah, let's go with this one, Aryan skirmishers, cool, um, so yeah, again, you know, we're Afghan, but we're getting Aryan skirmishers and stuff like that, uh, so, very much a cultural middle ground between the Persians and the, uh, the Aryans. Which is nice. Um, yeah, we have our own mercenary company. These guys here, the Afghan band. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, give them a nice militant looking coat of arms. Um, see anything else I need to cover before I 
close this off for now. Sure, there's the retinue I just created. Yeah. Oh, another nice thing also is, even though we're not Muslim, uh, we get the Muslim looking advisors. So it's kind of a nice little graphical thing. And I edited the, I, I modded the mod so that uh, Zunist Faith would get Indian style coat of arms borders, at least on the map, so that uh, that gives us a sun around our uh, our, ar our arms, which makes sense because you know Zunis. I feel like the mod should have had that originally, but yeah. So I think that's I think that's probably it for now. But yes, uh, if the game continues, then I will uh, keep you posted. Uh, again, we're going to continue the advance towards the Bool and eventually all of India and then all of the world. Um, eventually forming the Sikh Empire in Europa Universalis IV. Continuing that into Victoria II. Uh, and I'm not gonna, I'm probably not going to go fascist. Definitely not going to go communist. You can't do communist if you own the whole world. It's, it's Nobody can micromanage like that. Nobody wants to. Um, might do fascist. Probably going to stay HM government. Uh, go with a relatively liberal economic thing so that shit happens on its own. Uh, you know, interventionist, obviously, so I can subsidize. Um, then I'm going to try and do Hearts of Iron 4 if it's out, if it's ever out by then. If not, then I'll I'll buy uh, Hearts of Iron 3 and try to get it up and running online. Bring it into that. Won't be much of a point because I'll already own the whole planet, but I'll do it anyway. And then the cool thing is because Stellaris will definitely be out by then. I will bring the Sikh Empire, the Pashto-speaking Sikh Empire, into space and conquer the galaxy. So, okay, bear with me. We're going to... Uh, the capital of the galaxy, the future capital of the galaxy, my friends, is right here. All right, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you found this interesting, educational, and not boring. Uh, and uh, hope you hope you'll stay tuned. Save it quick, actually. Yeah. And I'll get this recording closed off in a second. If it ever finishes saving. There we go. It's a shame everyone got Islamicized. It's so boring, you know? I, I say that after I'm, you know, I say that while I'm going to try and seekify the whole world, but you know what I mean. You had all these cool cultures, and then after it, it's just all Arab. Arab. Alright, where is...